A CNC router and a laser? Is this the best of both worlds? Today, we're gonna find out. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Brett, and this is my laser garage. Me and my wife run a full-time laser engraving business out of our home, and this channel is all about helping you out with your laser or CNC business. A CNC router and a laser? Is this the best of both worlds? Today, we're gonna to find out. If you haven't seen my past videos about this CNC, I'll leave a link in the description so you can learn more about the Masuder 3S from Fox Alien. Make sure to check those out after you watch this one. Basically, the Masuder 3S is a pretty beefy budget desktop CNC, and I like it a lot. But Fox Alien sent me out something pretty cool that promises to expand this machine's capabilities. I'm talking about a 20 watt laser module. Let's take a closer look and I'll show you how to install it. So as I said, this laser module has 20 watts of power, which is a great power level for cutting and engraving. The kit comes with everything you'll need to install this on the Masuda 3S, as well as many other Fox Alien CNCs. An air assist pump is offered by Fox Alien as an additional purchase, but the laser comes with an air assist ready nose cone. I have an extra air assist pump laying around, so that's what I'll be using. It also comes with a safety shield to protect your eyes from the laser light, and I'll be trying out the fume hood kit for smoke extraction. Thanks a lot to Fox Alien for sending this out to the garage for testing. Now let me show you how to install this on the Masuda 3S. First, you'll need to remove your router or spindle from the Z-axis carriage, as well as the spindle mount. Next, you'll need to install the rectangular adapter plate on the back of the laser module, the air assist nose cone, and the laser safety shield. Now you can use the provided screws to attach the laser module to the Z-axis. There's four mounting holes on the adapter plate, but only two spots for screws on the Z-axis. I attach mine like this, which I think will be plenty strong. Next, attach the four pin wire to the laser module. I used a flathead screwdriver to help pop this in place. Just be careful not to force this so you don't damage the connections. The other end of this wire is a three pin connection. You'll need to plug this into the provided power adapter, then install the included jumper wire from the power adapter to the CNC controller. Make sure to flip the controller switch to laser and plug in the power supply to the power adapter. That's all there is to it. Now let's connect this to Lightburn. Connecting to Lightburn is really easy. With both the laser and CNC controller turned on, I've connected to my computer via USB. Click on devices and then on find my laser. This will automatically scan for connected devices and after a few moments, the laser will be discovered. Click through all the prompts and finally unfinish to complete the installation. Super simple, but here's a couple settings you'll need to check out to make sure everything runs correctly. First, in the machine settings menu, make sure $32 is checked true. Second, in the device settings menu under Z control, click enable Z axis. This will allow you to control the Z axis up and down through Lightburn. And last, under device settings again, click enable laser fire button and laser on when firing and set the power percentage to 0.5%. This will fire the laser at a very low power when framing so you can easily see where the laser is aimed. You'll also see that I have some scanning offset adjustments set here. That's a separate procedure which helps dial in the precision and engraving quality. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but give it a search on YouTube. It's really easy and makes a big difference. So that's it, we're all set up, let's run some tests. I started off by running a couple different material test cards and also trying out some engravings on various materials. I tried these on hardwood and also some MDF core plywood. This isn't the fastest laser by any means, but I was really happy with the quality of engravings I was able to get out of it. Now that I have a few tests under my belt, I thought it was time to engrave an actual project. This is an oak valet tray that I actually carved using the Masuda 3S CNC in my last video. One great benefit of having both a CNC router and a laser machine is the ability to customize your work. Whether it's for a side hustle, personal gifts, or stuff for friends and family, customization gives your work that little extra something. But what about cutting? Does this have enough power to get through eighth inch and quarter inch sheet goods? Let's run some material test cards and find out. For these tests, I went ahead and attached my air assist pump in order to help with the cutting. Overall cutting is on par with similar 20 watt modules I've tested. It's able to cut through eighth inch material at around 10 millimeters a second and a quarter inch material around four to five millimeters a second. Overall, I like this laser attachment. I think it's a good complement to a great desktop hobby CNC. There's a few things that I think can be improved upon though. And the first thing is safety. 
Being that this is a CNC machine first, the overall footprint is a little bit bigger than most 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter laser engravers. This is going to make it hard to find an enclosure for this. Enclosures are really important though because you need to be able to protect yourself and others from the harmful laser light and fumes produced. The included safety shield is okay, but you can't use the fume hood and the shield at the same time. They just don't fit together. So you're kind of forced to pick one or the other. Having some sort of fume extraction integrated into the safety shield would be a good idea for a future laser module. And as I said before, this isn't going to be a super fast laser engraver. Cutting is on par with other lasers in this class, but it's just tough for this machine to get up to the speeds that standalone lasers can get to. But of course that's expected. I mean, look how much beefier the gantry and Z-axis carriage are on this thing. This is a CNC machine first and foremost, so these parts need to be heavy duty to stand up to the stresses of CNC routing. There's a lot of extra mass here. That's a good thing for routing, but not for laser engraving. Is this laser perfect? No. But is any laser really the perfect laser? They all have their ups and downs, and the Fox Alien 21 module is no exception to that. Overall, I like it, and I think a lot of people can find this useful. I think this is best suited for someone interested first in CNC routing, but then would like to get into laser engraving to complement their CNC work, but maybe doesn't have the space for two separate machines. This would allow someone to have both units in one footprint, and switching between the two operations could be done in about five minutes or less. But what do you think? Have you used a laser engraver on a CNC machine before? What are your thoughts on this setup? If you want to see my full thoughts on this CNC, make sure to check out this video here. Also, if you're interested in purchasing any Fox Alien CNC or product, I'll have an affiliate link in the description below. Using this link to purchase doesn't cost you anything, but gives me a little kickback. This helps me continue to make content like this, so I really appreciate it. Thanks again to Fox Alien for sending me this laser for my review. If you like this video, hit that like and subscribe button, and don't forget to check out my other laser and CNC videos showing up in your screen in a few seconds. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.